Good morning. Here we are in this incredible week coming up to Good Friday. Walking with Jesus, thinking with Jesus, trying to feel what he felt, experiencing what he experienced, and remembering all the time he did it for me. He did it for me. He did it for me because he loved me so much. It is quite incredible to travel with Jesus from the Garden of Gethsemane to the cross and to see all that happened to him. This morning we're thinking about poor Peter. I say poor Peter because I think most of us feel sorry for him. He's so sincere and he so wants to do the right thing and he so keeps on putting his own foot in his mouth. Now notice this morning we're in Mark 14 and verse 66 and listen to what happened to Peter. While Peter was below in the courtyard, by the way, if you were with us yesterday, you'll remember that they're at the chief priest's house. And I said, if you go to Israel, you can go there. There's a church built now, thank God, because it preserved the site. But when you go, you'll find it quite fascinating, because you can go deep into the cells, into the basement, where Jesus probably spent the last few hours of that night. Also, you can see the place where the prisoners used to be beaten. Now, Jesus wasn't beaten there because he was flogged by the Romans. And this was for the Jews. But the same thing happened. Now, let's go back. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she looked closely at him. You also were with the Nazarene Jesus, she said. But Peter denied it. I don't know or understand what you're talking about, he said, and went out into the entryway. When the servant girl saw him there, she said again to those standing around, This fellow is one of them. Again, Peter denied it. In a little while, those standing near said to Peter, Surely you're one of them, for you are a Galilean. And he began to call down curses on himself, and he swore to them, I don't know this man you're talking about. Immediately the rooster crowed the second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows twice, you will disown me three times. And he broke down and wept bitterly. You remember what he had promised. Let's just turn back and read it. Earlier in chapter 14 and verse 27, Jesus said, You will all fall away, for it's written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I've risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter declared, Even if all fall away, I will not. I tell you the truth, Jesus answered, Today, twice, tonight, before the rooster crows, you yourself will disown me three times. But Peter insisted emphatically, even if I have to die with you, I'll never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. Now here's Peter. First of all, we see him in the garden. He's with Jesus. And he is willing to die for his Lord. And I believe he meant it with all his heart. I think he spoke from the center of his being. He would have done anything for Jesus. Now we see another scene. And it's only a few hours later. Jesus has now been taken captive, and the whole ball game is different. He's lost his Lord, he's lost his master, he's lost his leader, and Peter is lost, to be quite kind about it. I imagine tremendous confusion went through Peter's mind. He didn't know what to think, he didn't know what to say, and he's put on the spot by a servant girl. You were with him, you're one of them, you can almost feel it. And he responds, and he denies. Listen again to what happened. She looked closely at him. You also were with that Nazarene Jesus, she said. But he denied it. I don't know or understand what you're talking about. Peter, come on. You spend all that time with Jesus. You've just been with him in the Garden of Gethsemane. You've just told him you'll die with him. Now you're saying to this kid that you don't even know. What's happened to you? And yet, you know, when I stop and think about this, are there ever times when you denied Jesus 
for less than that? Or have you always been so faithful to him? Have you really ever denied Jesus? Have you ever been ashamed of Jesus in front of anyone else? Someone says, you're a Christian. You say, well, I go to church some night. Next thing is you're denying him. How is it that we deny the one we love so much? We have a hymn in England, and I quoted it once on this program. Ashamed of Jesus, that dear friend, on whom my hopes of heaven depend. Is that you? Ashamed of Jesus, that dear friend. Incredible, he's done all this for me. But I can't really stand up for him when the chips are down. But it goes on for Peter. You remember it didn't finish there. When the servant girl saw him there, she said to those standing around, This fellow is one of them. Again he denied it. Why did you? Why did you do it, Peter? You see, he was afraid he would be taken too. And Peter wasn't yet ready. He needed the experience of the cross and resurrection. He needed the filling of the Holy Spirit. After Pentecost, I see a different Peter. On the day of Pentecost, the very day that he was filled with the Holy Spirit, he stood up in that same city. And the same servant girl could have been in the crowd. And he declared that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. And he told the crowd they were responsible for his death. An incredible accusation to give to a Jewish group. Peter did it. And he knew he could die for it. And he didn't even care. Now what I want you to hear in that is the change between Peter here and the Peter on the day of Pentecost is that mighty filling of the Holy Spirit. When God's power fills us to overflowing, we become new people. We have a new courage. We speak with a new certainty. And Peter did that. But on the night of those trials, when he wasn't sure what was going to happen next, he could see them capturing him. He can see them taking him away. And he wasn't ready for such things. He thought he was. He verbalized that he was, but he really wasn't. And we've been like that, and we understand Peter, and we feel for him. Let's go on, because there's a third incident that we mustn't miss. After a little while, those standing near Peter said, Surely you're one of them. You are a Galilean. And it says in the other Gospels, they recognized his speech. Obviously, there was a different dialect from Galilee than from down in the south in Judea, where Jerusalem is. He began to call down curses on himself, and he swore to them, I don't know the man you're talking about. You don't know him, Peter. Are you talking about the Master? You've fallen down before and worshipped him. You've acknowledged before them all that this is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now you're telling this group of people that you don't know him. Do you see what fear does? Peter might be taken with Jesus, and he might be put to death with Jesus, because he might be put under the same conditions. And he couldn't face that, and he wasn't ready for it. His spirit wasn't ready. He wasn't really ready to die, although he said he had been. And straight away we see that Peter had not yet arrived where he thought he had. And there are many Christian believers just like that. They're not where they thought they were, and they're not where they were supposed to be. We can stand straight and erect in Jesus, and that's why Paul says what he does again and again. Stand. Stand firm. Be immovable. Steadfast. Why? Because some people are pushed about. They're pushed about by fear. They're pushed about by other people's ideas. They're pushed about by every doctrine that comes down the pike. One thing after the other pushes them around. Paul says, don't be like that. Stand firm. And how Peter must have wished he'd st stood firm that time. Three times they asked him. Three times he denied. This time with an oath, with curses on himself. He just denied the whole thing. He never knew the man. Peter, that's your Jesus. Now as you go through the day, be very aware if you do the same thing. And at the end of the day, look back and say, Did I ever, on one occasion, deny Jesus? Did I let him down? But then, of course, the real crunch comes for Peter. And you remember the incident. It's very fascinating, but very sad. 
immediately the rooster crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered the words Jesus had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows twice, you will disown me three times. And he broke down and wept bitterly. It tells us in Luke's Gospel that at that moment when the rooster crowed, Jesus turned and looked at Peter. I think that was the look of the greatest love at any time in the Gospel story. For Jesus loved Peter tremendously, but he also understood Peter. He understood that so often his mouth was ahead of his brains, that his head and his speech were ahead of his will. And they had been on this occasion. Yes, he had meant what he said in the Garden of Gethsemane, but now he found he wasn't up to it. He wasn't ready for the moment of crisis. He wasn't ready for the crunch. And those words must have just rung in his ears. Peter, you're going to deny me three times. Not me, Lord, the others maybe. You know me, I'll die for you. You know it, I mean it. And Jesus knew on his lips he did. But in his heart he was still a coward. Now he faces it. A servant girl twice. The people standing around once. And it was all too much for Peter. He came unglued. And then... He went out and wept bitterly. The one he loved so much, the one he served, the one he looked after, the one he called Lord and Master, the one he worshipped. Now, he's let him down. He's let him down. He's denied him. And Jesus had said, I don't know if Peter remembered it, but Jesus said, If you deny me before men, I will deny you before the Father in heaven. What a thought. If we deny Jesus, if we deny knowing Jesus, if we deny owning Jesus before men, he will deny us before the Father in heaven. Let's remember that what we say we have to carry out, but we do it in the power of the Spirit. We're weak like Peter on our own, but then we're not on our own. The Holy Spirit dwells within us. Let him have free reign. Ask him to take over. Give him the opportunity to be what he wants to be in you so that you can let Christ live through you throughout this day. And don't fall into the error Peter made. Stand firm in Jesus.